Oh. Two things I want to be in life is a cowboy and a fucking pirate. I would totally love to be a pirate. Like if, if <laughs> but I wouldn't be like a captain of a pirate ship. I'd just be like, I'd be like the pirate that when you seen that pirate, that shit was gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sponsors i want to thank caveman coffee a lot of good shit happening with caveman coffee right now man we're so stoked uh we're we just got into australia so we just got a distributor um down in australia and you can find it at cavemancoffeeco.au and uh, my friend peter cost will hook you up down there um He's got everything in stock. It's so it's so cool, man. Because Australia fans have been so huge to us and so loving, and and we're really just stoked to um, be on board down there and do what we can. Um, the the other uh, people I want to thank, I want to thank, uh, of course, Onnit.com. You guys all know what they are. My ad will be the shortest Onnit ad ever because Joe's is always the longest Onnit ad ever. Uh, great stuff, great nutraceuticals. I love their Alpha Brain. I don't sleep without it. I mean, I could, but I just sleep better and I sleep more vibrant and I sleep in deeper, deeper sleeps. And and I'm always looking at ways to how to how do I um better and optimize my life i hate saying optimize my life anymore it's become such a catch term everywhere every new tropic out there's got to optimize your life on it but uh it's really true man if you want to dial in and not just exist um there's things that you need to do to do that and i think exercise is a great thing and there's different supplements and, and on it really uh fills the bill and a lot of that stuff um i also want to thank uh the float lab and float clinics um both ones in venice and ones down in torrance good friends down there and i'm a real fan of the soak uh the um the uh immersion tanks where you can go into kind of a, a zero gravity estate uh, or state of of mind and body and and um you're just kind of, it's like, it's almost like a womb like space like experience it's weird to it's weird to say exactly what it is but if you can ever get into those isolation chambers and and just sit for an hour and a half a few times a week it'll really change your life in a short time man um your whole your whole gauge and out, outlook kind of alters uh, i also want to thank um natural stacks uh they've been really good and just hooked me up with a bunch of really cool shit and um, I'm really stoked uh, to be trying their stuff and, and going with it. And they have everything from all, all kinds of nootropics. They have a, a smart caffeine pill. They've got um, all, all kinds of different brain and, and health kind of enhancers. They've got a collagen protein that's also really nice. Um, and it's just stuff that you don't get a lot anymore. The way food's grown, the way meat is grown now, uh, there's there's a lot of ways that we get diminished and we don't get uh, vitamin enriched or um, nutrient enriched. Uh, enzymatically which is really what collagen does in a lot of ways we went to like the natural foods expo me and keith and lacy did for caveman coffee and um it was rad and then kroger and walmart all these crazy big huge corporate chains are really wanting to be on the cutting edge of what natural health and 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 um uh, body care is and that was really really encouraging to see and and i, I really feel like the grassroots force of you know, demanding grass fed, demanding wild caught fish, like all that kind of stuff. I feel like those big corporations are hearing us. There's a market that is demanding it. And like I always say, man, you got to vote with your dollars. And so it's really encouraging to see that, that that's happening. Um, what other sponsors? Cannon Creek Cowboy, of course. Dallas, killing it. Love Dallas. I think I'm moving to Dallas because, God damn it, it's fucking awesome. And Clutch Bar down in Dallas. Um, Man, if you're if you're there, if you're in the uptown area, you got to stop by and see those bars. They're they're just rad. And if you want really good, healthy food too, Clutch has got a full menu all the way. I think till midnight or something like that. We run. It's awesome. And then we got a concrete cowboy down in Austin as well. You know, it's like everything else. It's like whatever business you have, whatever anything you have. It's personality driven, man. And and the people and uh, the coworkers that I've got that are in all those spots, I just I really admire and thank them a bunch, man, because that that's what makes it all work for us. Um, and then we just opened a concrete cowboy. My partner Dan and uh, Carly uh, down in Houston, man, they're smashing it, and it's just been beautiful. What a reception Houston's been for us. So uh, I really want to um, really push that out as much as I can, man. Concrete cowboy, Houston, Dallas, Austin, and Clutch in Dallas, and we're going to open up Clutch Houston here. Probably the end of the summer we'll be done building. It's an awesome build out, and it's just fun, man. It's been super cool, and we may put a caveman coffee down in Houston, too. Uh, hit me on Twitter for sure and find out um, 
more about that and and let me know if you're interested in that if you're down in houston man uh what what a rad fucking energy down there um what else is happening i want to thank deuce jim for all my workout needs in venice california right across from whole foods so artfully located in the perfect spot and uh just love logan you can find him at functional coach find deuce jim at deuce jim deuce underscore jim i believe and um or you can find my girl at embo slice underscore and and just watch all the strongman happenings of southern california and guys that are kind of on the lead tip of the spear as far as uh fitness and nutrition go and how that conversation is going forward I'm trying to think. I know I got other sponsors, but maybe I'll put those at the end. I don't, I don't know. You can find me on Tatumus Maximus is uh, my Snapchat, which has been a great forum, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, just my name, T-A-I-T, Tatumus Maximus at Snapchat, and my Instagram, of course, Tate Fletcher, and my Twitter is Tate Fletcher. Other sponsors, Bloody Maria. Find them at Bloody Maria and at Nuevo Cerveza. Um, Nuevo Cerveza is about to go nationwide. Uh, it's a local beer that um, we brew here in Santa Fe. Me and Marcos Aragon been old friends for a long, long time. And, and then uh, he got in the beer brewing business, and I kind of got in the beer brewing business too. So anyway, um, yeah, that's that about does it for my sponsors. The big Tate Fletcher. Powerful Tate Fletcher. Is a, is a real alpha male. Weightlifter. He's a stuntman. Movie star. Robust, enthusiastic individual. He's huge, by the way. He's like a monster person. One of the sweetest guys I know. He's bigger than life. Actor. Entrepreneur. A fighter. The jiu-jitsu technician. He's also bald and he has all these tattoos. He's just a big fucking man. Uh, a man, a myth, a legend. Tate, Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. What's up, Tate Fletcher, you bad motherfucker? Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher is Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Teddy Bear. Motherfucking Fletcher, ladies and gentlemen. That's Tate Fletcher, everybody. The great <laughs> Tate Fletcher. Tate the animal Fletcher. Tate the savage Fletcher. Always moving. There's no stillness with Tate Fletcher. You will find no dust. Tate Fletcher's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He just said the word erection. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher's in the fucking house. Tate Fletcher! Tate really blasts out some serious hardcore truth bombs, and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. He always comes and goes anyway. He's like the the wind. He's kind of like Musashi a little bit. You in don't know when he'll be in and out. Like I said, I've been trying to ride with Harley's with him for fucking three years now. He keeps telling me, "Yeah, I just get grunts." Mm, uh. Huh. I don't know what that means. You kind of don't know what that means. Yeah. You guys are giving the good shit away, I'm telling you right now. That's cool. Oh, we're rolling. Are we rolling right we're now? Rolling. We're rolling. We're live. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. I guess we should say hello and thank you and welcome. And what you call it, you're, you're the party cast. Party cast. I don't know how you thought up that name, but. Uh, it's because we're all here. Well, today we're drinking uh, Cold Boo Caveman Coffee. So. Uh, and Caveman Are you more normal? You know, I was going to bring you beers. You were. I was going to bring in Nuevo Cerveza. And well, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, because true, I, I'm a be, true Budweiser fan, so... Um, it's yeah. way better than Budweiser, though. <laughs> You're going to like it a lot more. Does, uh, the, do they, do they uh, put money in my bank account every month? You'll like it for different <laughs> reasons. You'll like it for different reasons than that. <laughs> oh, because, I mean, I'd hate, I'd hate to, to, to stray away from the how much ice trouble, cold, how much delicious trouble Budweiser. That? How much trouble is that? Like when, the, when you say, no, I'm going to have these guys, and, th and then the UFC is like... No, you don't have that on your shorts. No, don't like. Is that? Have you? Uh, is there a lot of headbutting that happens? Yeah, yeah, a lot of headbutting. You talk about from Reebok? From everybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It goes. Uh, and is that really from Reebok or is it from the UFC? It's from the UFC. I feel like the UFC. The, the UFC puts a lot of stuff on Reebok. They're like, yeah, Reebok's just not paying the sponsorships. And I think no, the response they bought into it, and the responsibility was yours to pay the people, and you shortchanged every fighter out there. Well, not only did it kind of get us but i but feel like they're like the scapegoat they bought a five million dollar scapegoat i mean greg had three or four sponsors that he more like five more like five that and does reebok pay greg jackson to wear in the corner can we introduce her like greg jackson's here is how blackson is greg on, on blackson on greg blackson in the flesh greg blacks is that going to be your new uh, uh that's what rashad always used to say well i think that you should start like uh you know they have all the karate guys out there, and you uh -huh. could learn how you could teach people how to steal their souls and things like that, like okay. a real self defense. Right, like the the top level. Take stuff. it back, old school. At 1985, 
a little Killer. I'm a ninja. I can disappear, reappear. I like with your that. Soul yeah, and you can else. get you can get dot coms. You can get dot ninja now. I just saw a guy. He said, dot "Hey, ninja. go to my leg Come lock on. leg flow dot ninja." I'm awesome. like, it's a little presumptuous. I don't know. It's like going to dot big dick or something. You know what I mean? Like, mm, I don't know. Maybe I'd rather surprise you. And maybe unless if you thought it was, unless you're cool. packing a hammer. If you're packing a hammer, then. You <laughs> <laughs> So our trusted, our trusted leader, Greg Jackson. Trusted. Um, the, the wildling in, in the flesh, mm -hmm. Donald Cerrone. And uh, kind of quiet elder statesman, Keith Jardine, all, all here. Ooh, I do like the term statesman. Young. He is, right? He That's kind of the deal. Protein. What kind of protein? Do you put That's protein good. in your coffee? Collagen. It's like bone broth protein. Yo, that's good. It's got a good taste to it. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So have you done um, a podcast with Keith yet, Donald? I have not. When, when you do, I, I, it's probably hard to shut him up. What you'll know. <laughs> 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 what you notice is that it's like it's like uh, your voice is like mine, like your yeah. speak at a nor and then if it's just you and Ke then you'll hear your voice talk and then yes. <laughs> Uh, guys, is that the DJ stripper yeah. voice comes in? <laughs> yeah, I'm like he's so sensual. That's that's on stage three. Who needs on coffee? Stage <laughs> <laughs> on stage three, who needs more coffee? I remember coming to uh, Jackson's and meeting Keith for the first time with the old the old blue mats back there, man. I remember that. It was crazy, crazy. Did he? Time. Did you say hey, Keith? And he went, uh? No, nah, it was just kind of like stayed away for a while because he was really big and scary. And then and we he made a spar one yeah, time. Super smiley. Yeah. No, zero smiling. Real smiling. Yeah, real smiling. <laughs> Just welcoming. <laughs> uh, Glad that, oh, you like the sport? <laughs> Glad you're here, bro. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have and then we did have the Denver, spot. huh? Cool city. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's just uh, it was uh. Well, you came in with Dwayne uh, the first time. Yeah, didn't with Dwayne. Yeah. Bang bang. Bang Ooh. bang. It was uh, it was, it was scary. Scary as shit, man. Scary Dwayne's shit. scary as shit, man. I, I trained with Dwayne a bunch, man, and that that's that's how I like. Oh, it's Dwayne's guy, so this guy must be. Dwayne is like I remember running hills with Dwayne, and, and, and you an know animal. he's not gonna walk in the he's door with somebody that's not. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah he's he, he's a real man. Yep, love that guy. Sure. But I took my, my bit of Dwayne. I was diverted. Bit of Dwayne story. Like, um, there, there's this big hill, the Wink Hill, that we we would run up. My one of my first experiences with Dwayne, and and Dwayne training for fight, and I'm training for fight, and Wink has and me and Dwayne training together for this whole camp, and we sparred a little bit and stuff, and like like whatever. But um, we went up this hill, this Wink Hill that everybody dreads. You don't run up Wink Hill, like it sucks. And then Holly's about the only person that makes it up Wink Hill, hill all right. It sucks. And, and um. I'm running with Dwayne, and there's so you sprint up this hill. You sprint it like maybe like maybe three miles. What do you think, Greg? Three, maybe About four three. miles. Yeah, yeah, three miles. Three and a half. And it's straight, it's straight, goddamn up. <laughs> and so, so you go as far as far as you can go, and, then, and then, then you rest, and then, and then Wink tells you to go again, and then you go again, and then you rest, and the Wink tells you to go again, and you rest. And Continue and, up the hill or back down to no, the bottom. No, keep, keep going up, keep going up. It's just different levels going up. Sure. And so everybody that does this, like the rest, you take the most you can out of the rest. You try and get to that position you have to get to first so you can rest more, and, and it's just a whole game. So I'm running this with, with Dwayne the first time. First time he's ever run it. Uh, we, we'd rest the first interview, in, in interval, and we, we run again. And Dwayne's like, that's it? And so he starts doing squat jumps at every rest <laughs> interval so all good. the way to the top of this hill. Oh, and then, bang, bang. Yeah. And then we get down to the bottom, and um, – and we, we it's there's guys too that are like they want to do that to show you how little you're working but then there's also guys that are just like the nervous energy they're like well, i gotta get more working right that are it's legitimate authentically they're just they're afraid they're not working enough yep yeah it was all that's total, who he is yeah and i get those people all the time that want to show greg how good they work and i'm like yo dude slow the fuck down <laughs> <laughs> right, it's round one. They always hit the wall. Right, always. Chill out, Especially man. Especially when I start running behind them. God, yeah, I'm yep. with you. I, I see that. And I remember being that guy. I remember coming in and being that guy. Like, oh man, I gotta impress these guys. There's GSP and fucking Rashad and KJ. This is so cool, man. <laughs> so cool. I was living upstairs. And I just come down. I remember when you're living upstairs in a closet? How yeah. wild is that? Me yeah. and Leonard sharing a closet. It was a closet. Literally. Yeah. Literally a closet. Yeah, As the, everybody everybody wants everybody wants the BMF ranch or whatever. They want you know the ski boat experience or whatever. They don't understand the closet. They don't know no. about that. 
<laughs> they don't know about what the early morning. They don't know any of that. No, they have no. I mean, everyone wants to just be a fighter, man. That's what's crazy to me. It's like they want to just. They, they don't want to go through the. Here I am, fifteen years later, just now feeling like I'm coming into my own. You know, well, the crazy thing was, bro, is that Leonard just posted the other day he, after you uh, won your latest fight, and he says, "The wildest thing that we're seeing about Cowboy Cerrone right now is that he's only just coming into his. He's only just maturing right, right. now as a fighter." That's true. I thought, and I thought that's a really fucking interesting way to look at it, and that yeah. might be right. That's very right. I just feel, you know, I feel good, but you see these guys come in. They just they want the sh they want. How do I? How do I? Like, I'm, I'm going to use this analogy. <laughs> Thursday morning, I got to run a 5K with the UFC. So I'm going to start this some bitch. I'm going to jump in an Uber and go to the end and wait for him to come in. So that's what I feel like everyone's, what I feel like everyone's wants to do with their UFC career, right? They want to they come in, train, <laughs> right. and then all of a sudden get signed to the UFC and, and make a million dollars. Tate like, and I talk about that all the time. There's definitely our generation that came, wanted to fight before there was the old UFC, yeah. before there's the old Before there was fighter. money. Before there was money. We just wanted <laughs> to fight. There's money? Yeah. <laughs> $200, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you think again. about this, though. Think about the time when you get to a spot where – you don't have you don't have to be a personal trainer, a doorman, or whatever. What like, and that's only really even right now today in this modern day and age of the OC. Ten percent of the guys on the roster, all those guys are working some fucking job that'll allow them to train. Absolutely, like, it, it's not it's not like being a football player. It's not it's a different kind of calling. I mean, if if if, it, if we made money, like I figure, if I was the position I am. For a baseball player or a football player, I'd be making ten million dollars sure. a year. Crazy money. No but doubt. then you also think about this. Check it. How, how does the evolution of the sport change? If there is that kind of money mm -hmm. in the UFC, and then you've got the LeBron Jameses, you've got superhumans yeah. that are coming in and now putting punches and kicks together. It's like virtually everybody in the UFC right now would not have jobs. They would go back to their stock in the shelves True. at Walmart job. True. True. I don't know. What do you think about that, Greg? I like stocking shelves at Walmart. Pretty, pretty good money there. Fighting's a different sport, though. Like I'm sure you can have the Mayweathers and guys like that, like the Supreme Athletes come in, but there's just a certain grit to, to MMA that, man, like... Yeah, you had to see you don't think You don't yeah. think of all the football players and all the basketball players and all these high-level things had attention for five, ten years uh, to this sport that... I mean, because you're talking about people that are already genetically and athletically inclined in a different kind of way, right? Yeah. I think a little bit of both. I think it takes something special, but I certainly think that we're beginning to see that evolution now. Yep. I think with the uh, with the fighters the coming, fighters. Oh, we're getting the athletes. Yeah, it's a lot of that. And that's that's a kind of an interesting distinction: losing really the it. fighters yeah. and getting that's the it. athletes. Because you talk about these football players, I'm like, yeah, they might athletically be able to take you down. It's fucking crazy. And that's psychological. Yeah. But when they get that punch so hard that it's fuzz and gray and boo can, can you grind can you can you dig deep and be like yeah. oh no motherfucker not today <laughs> right so you need that to me you have to be, can you can you be the the nail for three right. minutes that's yeah. what i always think about diego sanchez when he fought uh bj penn and everybody was like and especially like people were quick to not you know the, the, all the little haters on the internet and all that and uh and BJ ended up finishing that fight in the fifth round, opened his head up with that head kick. And, right. and, uh, but what everybody doesn't understand, he was stopped. Like, he got stopped in that first round. And if it wouldn't have been Diego Sanchez, if the ref would have thought it was somebody, anybody right. else, that, like, but everybody knew, like, his toughness is legendary. Sure. legendary. And so he's kind of knocked out in that first round and then fought four badass rounds after that. Like, it's like, that's not everybody, man. That's a special fucking human right there. Very special. Very, very special. That's what you're talking about, like that. Yeah, the, the sure. Are you athletically? Can you can you learn jujitsu and can you learn to wrestle? But do you have it? Do you have the warrior spirit? They, yeah, the, the warrior spirit. I think there's the a thing, thing that made you wanted to do it when there wasn't money in yeah. it. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, like, I just want to see what it's like to be a fighter. Like yeah. that's, that's. It kills it. me when I see the post and the young and they're like, "This is what I do to get paid." And I'm like, "Shut up! Just shut up! You're hurting my ears. <laughs> You're looking silly. You don't even know how ridiculous you look. You're ruining your own name in the future. Stop it." Well, I mean, when I when I came down here seven years ago, and it was the blue mats and the small cage and you looked around the room and it was fucking killers man right <laughs> yeah it was like there was like you said there was no money in it everything it was just it was just i mean 
And you're the new guy. Everybody's looking yeah. at, at cowboy. Who's this cowboy kid? Like, yeah. oh, he's a kickboxer. Oh, like, and everybody looks. Oh, see, how's he doing? All right. Well, am I gonna have to jump in there with him? Because <laughs> yeah. like, he, he can't be doing good. <laughs> you're the new guy. You're the new guy, yeah, right? Yeah. And and now you look at, at the at the guys that are, are trying that. Now it's a fad. You know what I mean? Like, now it's everyone true. wants to do it. So you, you look at the gym now, and I don't I don't see the the. the the stream. I mean, yeah, of course we have all the, the guys, you know. But then you look and you see some of the you're like, man, this dude. It's the same way you're talking. Here. The same way you're talking about in, in the good new guy that, that you got to you got to have balls to step into a mat and be the new guy. Right. Fuck. The same way, like the shitty guy, like like if that guy doesn't belong in there, we're gonna let the guy know he doesn't belong in there. Greg like, would like, say, uh, "Let's get a little green light going on here." Yeah, that's yeah, what we, I would do. <laughs> Happened to those yeah. days. I, I, I remember, like, I remember one time, Keith, like, he just goes. And we're all doing circles, and we're and he's like, he's not a very good guy, and that would be it. That would be just all like, he's not a very good guy. And then okay, well then you're gonna maybe have to head kick him. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of that's in favor of that guy. You you better figure out early that you're it's not true. meant for this because if you waste the next five years of your life getting hit in the head and this ain't your calling, then that ain't your calling. So better to find out early. I, 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 you Space must get a lot of people that ask you, right. <laughs> to ask you how to do it when you're out in the world. Like it's gotta. Uh, it's got to be it's, it, for, for me how it goes is like at first I'm interested in what you got to say and I want to help you and then I go oh he's not really about shit anyway yeah. and then you have the fucking 400th guy and you're like okay fuck this and then you get and then you get a little short uh, sound bite like an elevator speech to give him and then you fuck him off and then you go on with your life What's that for, for you, me, man? It has, to be, it, has to be, it has to be everywhere he goes right? It has to be everywhere. a guy coming like I am Oh, because you're not girl, even just I a stupid fighter. You're the guy. You're the guru, man. Yeah. You're, you know, yeah, I have right. 37 knockouts. I fucking train all day, <laughs> yeah. and I grew up. Th this is what I'm born to do. Wait till you see. Watch my video. What do you do when that what comes I, up? You know, what I have found is the more they tell me they're going to be a champion, the less they actually want to be a champion. And most of the guys that I watch don't say anything to me. They just go and they do their thing. Um, and then I'll I'll be like oh this kid's good, but the more they're saying I'm gonna be a world champion, you know you don't know how bad I want it. That, that's masturbatory, right? It's like they've already lived that moment, so why would they do it that's like in their imagination? Thing. So yeah. like why it's like the Rocky thing, like you watch the movie that's gonna be me. Um, right. But that has, Rocky has nothing to do with fighting. The the highs have nothing to do with fighting. Literally nothing. The highs last what a week tops and then yeah. if you're a real fighter oh, you want to do it high again. Though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah it is i'm it's not arguing high. that but i will say but that the most of being a fighter is dealing with disappointment and grinding and well, i was gonna up say then there's the incumbent battered. depression that is and always the fall present. afterwards and then always then 100%. the incumbent stress that comes on of the phone call oh my god who's the next guy who's it gonna be like there's there's all these cycles of, of uh the cortisol that's just spiked all the time yeah and that's like those guys like they'll never i don't, I don't think i ever understand that no. I still go to Greg the kind of flashback like um, I, I, when I go to sparring on Mondays or whatever I'll still go up to Greg and do the same way hey what about this kid over here who's this kid I'll go and, and get the lowdown on the new guy or whatever and like if he, is he a real guy or not a real guy or then he waits for Cowboy to get tired but hey let's go a couple rounds <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good trick that's absolutely true <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, you, did, you did five rounds alright come on let's go <laughs> one of my favorite videos come is on, when you're, you're fucking around and then you take down on uh Reem, I guess. I think he's messing, with, and 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 then you're on top of him. Yeah. He's in a, he's just pulled a lazy guard, kind of, <laughs> and uh, and you're touching him, and and you're like, "What's up?" And I was like, "It's gotta be so horrible." I felt for him because I was like, <laughs> "How horrible is that right now?" This little motherfucker is just talking all this shit, going, "Oh, and you're the heavyweight. Like maybe I'll move up to heavyweight too because I'm handling you." Oh fuck! I did that to Cowboy the other like day. Yeah. Poor guy. I was going to spar with a guy that was uh, I think the 185, whatever, and he's a UFC guy, and he's all. No, no. Last time I hurt my rib, whatever, and then he's telling me no. no and uh, okay, it's cool, man. It's cool. And uh, he's like, no, I changed my mind. No, no, it's cool, man. Hey, cowboy, one fifty five. Let's go, let's go, go around. Like, oh, sure. <laughs> I remember when you came and told me that. Yeah, 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 I love it, man. Like I was trying to get rounds with these guys, and then fucking ain't nobody wants rounds all of a sudden, and then. Cowboys, I'll, I'll go though. Like after he's been working out for three hours. <laughs> I, tell, I tell people this all the time. Like 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 during during probably like my my uh, biggest time and heyday and fighting cowboy was like my best sparring partner, one fifty five pounder. He's tall and he's fast and made me work harder than anybody, man. And go ahead and name another 55er that was in there at that time. You didn't even know anybody's <laughs> no. fucking name. You're like, no. if you ain't 85 or bigger, I don't even know you. Yeah. Like you don't yeah. exist in my life. Yeah. And the funny thing is, when I got there, so I show up and it was. Melvin Gillard, Diego Sanchez, Clay Guida, that's a lot of power. Uh, Roger Warta, 
Um, Leonard Garcia at the time was still 55. Um, it was a deep 55 class deep, in the gym. Deep, and, and I come from... Stevenson. I, yes, Joe, Joe Daddy was there, you know? So it was like, there was eight or nine of them, right? Yeah. So when I came walking in the Giants the first day, coming from Colorado where nobody... If you, if you asked if Cowboy was on their team, oh, hell to the no. no I wouldn't get claimed. I was like the, the redheaded stepchild that they were like, yeah, we should bring that dude in to beat up on him. And I was like, it. So when I came, and Gregory was like, man, I'd really like you. I was like, you fucking want me to be part of your team? Like... I, I remember I called my grandma like I'm not coming home. She's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "Oh, you got to sell my house and bring my shit down." And I literally never went home. I'm gonna live in a bunk bed. I went on bunk bed. <laughs> seriously, seriously I, I came down here and I never left. Yeah. I like I never went home. Yeah. My grandma sold my house and would just make trips down here with truck fulls of shit and bring bring everything down to me. I never left. Like it was so up to an honor for Greg to like want me to be part of his team. Right. I did the same thing. You know that, that now I'm thinking about that. I I came up here from northern New Mexico. I met Greg once. I came down a second time, met Greg the second time, and that's it. I'm moving up to Albuquerque. That's it. Boom. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That God damn, if only you guys were hot chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Liddell said that he's like, "Why do I got to be a part of a sport where it's just truckers that like, <laughs> like this is awful?" <laughs> or the super hot chick, and you're like, "Oh my god, my boyfriend loves you," and you're right. like, "Yeah, I'll go fucking whatever." Right? Great, great. <laughs> right. I'll high five. Thanks. High five. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, at that time there was a, like, I don't know if there was a real thing, but there was talk about like no more, no more fifty fivers can come in the gym for a while. Yeah, we're right? so we deep. were topped out. Yep, that's for sure. We're that so was a lot of guys, man. It yeah, fun. it was a it was a good time. I uh, I look back very fondly on those years. It was a lot of good times, and it's cool that we're still like. I mean, some of us are retired, some of us are still fighting, but we still all get together and stuff. That's kind of why I got in this business in the first place. So it's, that's it's what nice I don't think any of those guys understand it. It's not uh, it's not the lights and shit. It's like the it's the brotherhood that kind of yeah, comes up. Camaraderie. From, I mean, it, it, it's like that. I, I can only imagine like what it would be like for guys like a Tim Kennedy or something like that. But like in this little way, in this like contrived kind of way of, of this fight sport that kind of fellowship and and that to go and suffer together like that man that's a it's been a huge honor man like absolutely. that's something else absolutely yeah, and that's so the thing right. too i was thinking about like you and that's the thing you got to fall in love with suffering you got to love to a dude hit me up on uh snapchat today i'm sure you're on snapchat right greg for sure every day yeah. that's all um, i do is snapchat <laughs> facebook and instagram He's like, is, that a, is that an std <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, i'm married i don't have but that. but uh and he's like well, how do you do it? Like, and how do you stay motivated and stay, you know, to get to the gym and to go do jujitsu and this and, and all this kind of stuff? And and I, and I just thought about it. It had been a long time since I, I go. Well, he says, because I'm tired after work. And like, there's all the reasons, sure. right? And I'm like, there's there's dudes that have excuses, and then there's dudes that are doing the shit so much that they don't have time to think about the excuses. They don't. The excuses don't exist. And and like that became the thing. I go. Well, I'm going to work this shitty bouncing job. Uh, because then I can train in the day. To, you know, I, I, I go, I fit my life around the thing that I wanted, and yeah. that's what you have to do. Like, and otherwise, you have excuses that you live by, so you're either proactive or you live in those excuses. Yeah, that, that, that translates to, to the fighting itself, too. Uh, um, I talk about like when I was fighting, I was never a great athlete. I was never very good at one thing. I was never very strong, whatever. But I was always good at suffering. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. 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 Whatever, whatever. That's, really, that's great, yeah. yeah. But I put on a cowboy, and that, that's what I say about cowboy, too, because he's the same way as, as what I remember myself being, is like, like cowboy's good at suffering, man. Like, like that beginning of the fight, that's a hard part of the fight. When 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 you walk in and, and you're supposed to do a game plan, you're supposed to do things and whatever, and, and the lights are still bright. But when it gets into that second round or whatever, and, th and you start suffering, and and it just becomes like a, a war a war of wills, you know, a battle of wills and all that. Like that's where you shine, man. Okay, this is now I'm now I'm at home. And this you is feeling break, right? When yeah. Oh, when you feeling break. When that's the best. Oh my God, they're, they're not. A f I mean, well, for the people who don't know, what we're talking about like. I couldn't even explain to you yeah. what that feeling is. You could just feel that you could I got it. Yeah. overpower someone's willpower. I can like, watch your fights. Now you can I watch, can watch it. your yeah. fights. I can see the look on your face like, all right, wait wait till this next round. Or you can see them yeah. and go, yeah. they're they're done now. They're yeah. waiting. They're hoping that he puts together a couple of combinations that put him down. <laughs> like, yeah, and you can, yeah. But you can yeah. see it in, in, in the opponents out there. You or, can see it. On, on the other end, you can, there's that moment. It's a beautiful moment, too, where, where this is – you had a kind of thought, oh, this is where most people would break. Yeah. Right. And then you turn and you, and you face what's coming to you. Like, and you, and you don't. Like, that's a beautiful thing, too, you know? Yeah. And it's like um, people always ask me, God, Greg is a master of game plan. Like, you guys must sit down for hours <laughs> of game plan. And I, and I say, well, I'm a little different than most people. Like, yeah, I'm sure he gets game plans for everybody. For me, 
we just like cowboy. How can we start the first fucking thirty seconds of this fight? We, <laughs> we fucking give it, let's just start with that. Let's just start. How can we start the first thirty seconds of this yeah. fight? Because that's what we need to focus on. <laughs> right? After so that, just, whatever. Right? After that, whatever. Just go out there and, and and every time you and I train, Keith, you always give me the same words of advice. Cowboy, go out there and get tired. You know, yeah. like in that. Uh-huh. And to me, that's what I try and do. Like it's, I'm always in shape. You know, with all the Budweiser and not par- mark not training that people think I do. Uh, but that's the biggest fear, though, is, is yeah. to get tired because that's yeah. you go out there and you're tired and you're that's not performing the, worst the way you can, yeah. you know, and, and, you, and you can't you can't give what you want to give, and that's the biggest fear. It's not about the guy knocking you out or the guy being a big scary guy. It's like about myself. Like, how do I feel? Am I going to go get tired? Mm-hmm. And fuck that, well, man. Just go when, get tired. When and, have you ever felt more crippled? Then when you didn't feel like you could answer because you were fatigued. sucking wind so hard and yeah. you're fatigued and you just had no, there's nothing that feels that bad. I tell you what though, there's no better. You just get me pumped up. There's no better feeling <laughs> in the word world, right? And you were just talking about that. that after that, after the fight's over and whatever decision where you know you won, but you can't even lift your hands because yeah, yeah. you're so goddamn tired <laughs> from the core, man. It's from crazy. the core. Yeah. Then you wake up the next day and your every muscle hurts. Like, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm so sore. But that's that, that that's. Even, yeah. I love that, that that Randy Couture would say that when he was like as a, as a, he's like as an older guy he says the only difference is that I can't get in shape. He goes, it, it'll take me six months to get in shape. He says, I have to stay in shape. Yeah. He says, when I was younger, I'm 23, I'm 26. Man, you give me a six-week camp, I can get into shape. But like, and I, I was talking to Peanut about that a while ago too, about like that thing about like, like where you're at, dude, the reason you are mature, like people think it's magic or they think the person is special or something, <laughs> which is, it, 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 it bums me out because it uh, degrades the work that you do, right? It, 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 it degrades the suffering that you do and, and people, and then it, it also degrades that own that own person spirit because they're broken without trying because they say I'm just different than cowboy I could never do that right or I'm Man. no I'm no Tim Kennedy I can't do that and it it's looks like, that's, like that too that's a lie. It? No, it looks like how oh just drink beers sure. go play on the lake sure. whatever and show up oh whatever but like that's the fight, thing is if you're not always in shape work behind that and you got so you got eight weeks and you're. I don't know if you're a 55 er and you're 175 pounds or 180 pounds. Okay, so now a lot of that spent. I clean up my diet. I'm coming down in weight, and so a lot of that is focused like that, getting my wind together, things like that. And then maybe you have three weeks in there where you work on skill sets and you can get better at those skills. And then you're just coasting to the end of the, like, and that's your thing. Whereas. And then you go down, you have the big depression after a fight, <laughs> you eat yourself like shit, you go back up to 185 pounds, and then you get a call, and then you're more freaked out, and then you eat a little more, and then you're like, okay, time to get serious, and then you have a camp, and you go through the whole thing again. But that all makes you stay on a static plane that never changes. Whereas like what you're doing is staying in shape all the time, okay. and so your cardio is always good, your weight's always good, and in that way, your skill set, for that eight weeks, you get to work 75% of the time on your skills getting better, and that's where champions get built and then you just have a trajectory of going up and up and up and the only thing that stops that trajectory is age at a certain point where you'll cap out on that sure. and there'll be diminishing returns but if you're not there yet like that and that's the way it's built and all this like it seems like an old school way like everybody used to do that where they would get fat out of shape get back in shape go and train like right and, and I, 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 get but I think that's changing I now isn't it you. I don't get how they get fat and not shit. But for me, I feel like if I don't have a date, that's what I tell Joe Silva and Dana every time. I don't need an opponent. Just give me a fucking date. Because without a date, I take a whole week off. I go drink and I have nothing to do and I feel unemployed. I, it's the weirdest <laughs> feeling. I seriously feel fucking unemployed. Like, God, what that's am I That's a bad feeling. Do So then I get a date. Like, now I got, you know, my date. And I have an opponent too now. But uh, Rick Story, August 20th. Motherfucker. But, uh... Oh, sure. Yeah, so now I'm good, and then August 20th, I'll be rallying for another one. <laughs> I, think that's, I, I think that's huge. Like, their fighting taught me everything, because I think that that speaks to goals. And, like, if you're a man without a purpose, like, that's what, you know, Greg echoing, like, that feels horrible to not have a job. It's like, if you, the only place I've been really super, the darkest times, is when I feel purposeless, yeah. where you feel like there's, you know, and, 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 so what the fuck? And then if you get little goals, man, it doesn't even matter. And like you say, man. It doesn't even matter if you reach your goals. It doesn't matter. You just have to pick something and go towards it, right? You just have to. Yeah. What's beautiful about what Cowboy does, though, is um, um, a lot of times after a big win, you, you, after a little loss, it's easy to be like, I want to get in there and fight. Right back, yeah. But a lot of guys with a big win, like your big win, everybody was talking about it. Like you looked awesome, Cowboy's a new Cowboy and all that. I mean, it's easy just to want to sit down and rest on that and be like, all right, now I'm going to take – this time off and be be that guy. Oh, you have no idea how upset I am that I missed that rear naked choke. I've been in, I've been in, I've been in, going with Tusa and going to Gracie, 
and fucking working on that because I am pissed off. You know, I will see. There's something else in common that I see about a lot of really top fighters is they won't get out of the cage and they're already mad. GSP was the master of that. George would come back and the first thing he would say to me, I'd be like, hey, great fight or whatever. He'd be like, why why didn't I, what did I do wrong? What can I do differently? Cowboy does it to me. You know, um, uh, Tom uh, Dukenois from uh, France, he does the same thing too. He had a beautiful knockout in his last Bama and he was like, oh, what did I do wrong? Like, not out of the cage already asking me and i'm like you know what enjoy your victory you're going to come back to the gym and we'll work on it but yeah. i like that hunger it's like great it. i see it? it everywhere in business too because people are like when i'm like hey dude and i critique them this way or that way and they're like well yeah but this is great and that's great i'm like if we're only talking about great shit then we're never getting better there's <laughs> always a place if you're not looking to fucking polish your character and your skill set and all that we've got nothing to speak about with that, one of the worst things that ever happened to me in my career is um, after I beat Chuck, uh, they couldn't find me in an opponent. I forgot what happened, but I think it was a year till I fought. So I had to live with that and being that guy for a year. Right. Like the best thing that happened to me is I, I got another fight in two months. That's so yeah, what that's um, that's it. what brought you guys to start up Caveman Coffee? Oh, look at Cowboy trying to switch gears. Hold on, dude. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. That's just, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm sitting, in, I'm sitting in here in your, in your, in your coffee factory, and I'm just kind of I'll looking around. You know, I'll, I'll start off. Good real coffee. Quick. I'm curious. I'm just curious. What, what brought you to, to Keith, Keith fields all those questions? <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, Tate's over here with his fucking fanny pack, bro. Tate, not jealous. I'll get you one if you want. Uh, I'm good. We, we never heard that question before. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like, you, you guys, you guys, coffee? Like, what's going on? <laughs> it's not about coffee at all. Really. I mean, it is. I mean, we sell coffee. I'm, we're the proprietor of coffee. But um, I was at a point uh, done with fighting, I guess. I didn't really know. But just my nutrition was out of hand. And I was kind of suffering mentally, like, as far as, like, I got to work out twice a day, every day, just to maintain this certain kind of body image and, and shape just because this is what I've done. And, and this is like, it was just so hard and, and kind of getting depressed over that that stuff. And I sat down with Tate one time and started talking about nutrition and getting high fats in my diet and all that. And it took me a while to get started in it. This is a long story short, but I got started in it. And I started doing the high fat diet, kind of paleo diet. And I got more energy than I ever did before, like better body image than I ever had. And, and my, my, the cloud that was in my brain cleared up and all that. And, and so then, so I just What do you think that cloud in your brain is? Cause I get it all the time. It's, it's a lot of things. It's, it's, um, it's overtraining, it's fatigue. It's, it's nutrition is huge in that man. Fuck. Like just recovery, having the right, right, right nutrition in there, brain fog, man. Um, I lived in that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like I trained and and I slept. I would sleep and eat, and after I every time I wake up, it take me about an hour to clear that fog a right. little bit to go out and train a little bit. And the only time my mind was ever clear was in the middle of training when I was surviving because my mind autopilot uh, yeah autopilot and the f fight or flight or whatever and that nervousness is good for you but they for say a regular you life your base your skull and that that you yeah. those yeah. kind of automatic functions come up yeah and i lived in that brain fog otherwise and, and, and so anyway so i got into the good diet and nutrition and, and we started preaching that we and it kept, the coffee is like uh butter coffee and things like that was just like a way to to introduce not eating all the time intermittent fasting yep. um high fats in, in your diet and all that and, and I intermittent fast just because um, I move so fast in life that I don't have time to eat. So yeah. that's what I do. So when you do that, like there's a lot of Skittles and fucking rock and roll. But, but see, that, that's kind of like opposite, nutrition. though. That's no, no. Nutrition. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of opposite, though. And that's what this <laughs> that's is all about. Like get, getting the high fats in your diet will keep you from eating your muscle for using your muscle right. for minutes. You know what I hate about that, about Cowboy saying that? Yeah. Is because so I, I usually say it's this. usually a fat guy that's like, well, I eat pretty good most of the time. And then like Ruben will say, can't argue with results. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then you look fucking Cowboy cocksucker is like, yeah, I just eat garbage all the time, and then I, I sometimes I don't eat for a while, and then I swallow a multivitamin and some beer, yeah. and uh, that, and I'm I'm you're burning, mad at you're burning them calories. In Cowboy's yeah. defense, he only has what an eighth of a stomach or something. Yeah, in that's there. true. A lot of people don't know that. Yep. Yeah. So they're like, I want to be ripped like Cowboy. I said, go ahead and cut your stomach out and get a tape. So here's me. a funny story about my half stomach. Ready for this? I'm a big, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big actor now. Did uh, one episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Good for um, you. So we had to do me and Paul Felder had to do this role where we they the guys make this crow milk, right? And the crow milk is they make it from protein. The blah, blah blah. Anyways, it's supposed to be like get you big. Well, we take it because. I was playing myself because it makes you shit and throw up. But in the scene, so we're shitting good. and we're throwing up, right? So they get like this cream of mushroom and this almond milk. I'm supposed to put it in my mouth. I'm supposed to say these lines. Then I'm supposed to throw up. 
So it can't be real. With my half a stomach, if I just drink a bunch, that's the problem why I can't rehydrate because it makes me throw up. So I was like, well, let me just pound this almond milk and I'll throw up for real. So Charlie and Matt come in and I fucking- Real method. I, I drink it, right? <laughs> method after. So I start puking and the reaction of everyone in the room was fucking priceless, man. Just because I'm like, puking for real. So that, that's the issue with my, with my stomach. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't eat I or can't drink wait a lot. to see this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Probably gonna win. Like, what do you win? An SB? Is that what do you get from TV show? Not sure. Uh, I think it's a, is it like Academy SB Award. You get three of them. Probably get three. You probably get a try a uh, hat trick. They <laughs> call it. I'm very excited about it. When did you Act- film it? We did it at in LA for the UFC 199. Was it you and Cub did it? Your Cub was in there yeah. too. Cub, Fucking yeah. Fucking awesome. It was so fun. It was fun playing me, and I was so worried because they gave me a pages of yeah. lines. And I'm yeah. like. I don't ever remember all these lines and blah blah blah, right? But then Danny DeVito was doing his, and the son of a bitch changed his lines. I, they, they shot the same scene twelve times, and twelve times he had a different approach. So yeah. I was like, "Oh, I can do this. You just make shit up." Got it. So then that like took the the burden so off that you ad lib and all that. Yeah, whatever. I I was playing myself, so I could just you know say. I mean, it was so a rat. That's what we kind of wanted you to say, and then I would just forget the line and fucking say what Cowboy would say so it worked out perfect for me god damn that's awesome I forgot DeVito that's the, that's the best man to be, no, he's, he's so the, cool but yeah. I talked to him and he was like fighter huh but those like uh, Gracie guys do that shit <laughs> <laughs> I was like yeah okay, I mean sure yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's what it is but it, it was just fun to you know talk with him about it and just the whole acting experience man it was a lot of fun I never it's weird being able to like get mad at somebody, but then as soon as the scene's over, you're like laughing and and, and doing it again. Like, right? I couldn't even. I don't. I don't like that. I'm not good enough for that. No? I, I, I disappear. Like if I have to be angry, at like angry with somebody, whatever. Then oh, okay, we're gonna be friends, whatever. I, I just kind of disappear a little oh. bit. I'm not good at that. Even when you're pretending. Uh, I'm getting better at getting my uh my my backstory in my head going on. It takes me a few minutes, but it's still hard. You got to keep switching, switching, switching. I would like, love to play like you was talking I, about the, this cowboy role you got come with. That'd be so fun for me to play like a yeah. six shooter, fucking beat him up. Always I want to be in like a cowboy and a fucking pirate. I would yeah. totally love to be a pirate. Like if, if <laughs> but I wouldn't be like a captain of a pirate ship. I'd just be like I'd be like the pirate that when you seen that pirate, bad shit was gonna happen. Yeah. Right? Like I'd be like <laughs> right. But like, did, like you watch, did you ever watch? Did you ever watch The Wire? But they kill people. You watch The Wire? <laughs> no, dude. You got to there, There's a dude Omar, and he's the fucking craziest character. But like he has a he has a, like a. A song he sings or something. He's a gay dude, this yeah. fucking black gay gangster in a trench coat and carries shotguns. And when you hear that song coming, that's your fucking ass. You know, yes, yeah, I'm saying that that would be the kind of character. Yeah, like I wouldn't have yeah. a pirate ship and like a whole team. Like you wouldn't see the black <laughs> pearl coming in and know like, oh shit. You would just see me like in the shadow, like fuck, and then it'd be it. You know, I'd be I'd be just be that guy, and I'd just ride from ship to ship and rape and pillage with all the other guys. I don't know. <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> would you rape and pillage with all the other guys, or would you be like, I want to be there first, and then you can rape after I've already raped? Yeah, well, I don't. Well, yeah, I mean, you probably. I don't know if this did. is a PC talk, coach. I uh, we would neither rape nor pillage. You would ask nicely to have sexual intercourse, and then ask for all their goods in a very polite and respectful manner. Nah, I'd, 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 I'd probably rob, and then I'd give the option, I can pay you, but I want to pretend I'm still raping you, so how does that play in? Can you do that? Is that, is that a fair thing? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting into into pirate, pirate. rules, the <laughs> rules of a pirate. Yeah. I think you make your own course. You would. Yeah. It'd be, yeah. Being a pirate. And then so always, you got to keep in mind, hey, maybe I did it wrong that time. A lot of dead folks there. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. And then you go ahead and you're a nicer guy the next time. Don't need to beat yourself up over it. Mm-mm. We just move on. You learn and you move on. Yeah. Pirate, being in, in those two eras would be so fun, I think. Except so for the disease. Like, you get a hangnail, yeah, you might die rough. of fucking infection. Also, also parasites. Like, oh, and then in the Cowboys, listen, you always think, okay, you're in the middle of the main street. You know what's in there? Shit. It's just all human shit, goat shit, cow shit, horse shit. Listen, it's a sea of shit. Cowboy pirate that, that, world yes, that I have yes, in my mind, yes. that is not an issue. <laughs> okay, I'm the guy that comes in and kills. You know what you're gonna Hollywood love pirate. You're gonna love fucking uh, Westworld. This HBO oh, show I coming out. It's gonna be yeah. fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. But everybody smells like shit. You smell like shit. Everybody smells like shit. It's just like the. the it's it's you, smell, yeah. you know what I mean? You've been around a horse all day. You're in a campfire, drinking coffee and eating grinds. That's what you do. You're grinding your teeth, spit it in the hot water. 
<laughs> hey, we going we we going to uh, we going to um, speaking of pretend we going to tomb. Yeah, you know, I was, I was saying yeah, we're, we're going, going to, there. And, and yeah. no, you and I are not going to tombstone anymore. I'm putting my foot down. We're I'm, going to tombstone. I'm done talking three years. You guys never been to tombstone? No. We'll, uh, I didn't want to talk to we ga- or, uh, TJ gassed me up about three years ago, telling me how live actors and freaking yeah, cool it's pretty cool. Dirt yeah. roads and horses. They still have a lot of the go-go stuff go-go there. Ahead. Bullet holes still in the wall. I went there cool. by chance, man. I, I had a fight coming up, and, and I just you know what? I got I got my training to camp next week. I got like four, three days actually, so I'm just gonna pack up my stuff and Holy head, shit, head you south. Get three days off before your fight? Well, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Unheard of. So as I head south, and I, I was in Winslow, Arizona, I just ended up there somewhere, and I was looking on the, the gas station map, and I was like, oh, there's Tombstone. I was really, I'm in I, the history of Billy, uh, uh, White Earp and, and all that stuff, and Billy Kid too, and everything, and, and I read all that stuff, and like, so I got to go right at Tombstone. I can make that in a day's ride. I went there. It was the biggest night of the week, and Tombstone was like, it was meant to be, man. Yeah. It was like Hell Dorado weekend or something right. like that. People come in from all over Everywhere. the place, riding horses, dressing cowboy, whatever, and 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 just like, and there's full time actors being being Doc Holliday, being Wyatt Earp, and just walking around, and, and they hate each other too. Like like there's a factions and all that, and it was so cool to be there, like on my little iron horse amongst these guys, and I drank all night, I'm not dry. I hang out with the guys, I drank a little bit and all that stuff. The, the long story short, I had to be in Albuquerque the next day. And um, I stayed there so long, I had to go like 110 all the way up, up to get this appearance at a tattoo convention in Albuquerque. And I was just leaning forward on the bike for yeah, like, man. yeah, for like four or five hours, just maxed out. Just awesome. so on the Wyatt stuff. Earp talk, you see this license for prostitution, 1976, signed by Wyatt Earp. I got hanging on my wall. Whoa! How cool is that piece of little piece of history? Wow, is that for his place that he owned? Yeah, I, don't, I, I got. It's that the, the picture of the of the whatever her name is. Marshall Wyatt or yeah, and a fifty dollar bill. Eighteen seventy six. Little cowboy gave gave it to me. He's like, here, I want you to I want you to have this. I was like, do you have any idea? This is probably worth some money. He's like, I don't care. You'll like it better than me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> wow, that's Don't five years out. before the uh, gunfight. Crazy, right? Yeah. Sick. Yeah, a wild herb signature hanging on the wall. Diamond Bessie. Diamond Bessie. You get in where you fit in, baby. Picture her in a bathtub. That's what's hanging above it. That's Here, here's a bit about wild herb. Like if you read um, any history on wild herb, like he was exactly what they talk about. Like there's newspaper articles and talking about like shit he said. Like like you gonna skin that smoke wagon and all that shit. Like he really said shit like that. He really challenged everybody, and and he was really that kind of badass. Man. He was like an old west Musashi. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> he did have some he good ones. Here's a sure. Musashi with Greg, Greg has one. Greg knows a lot more than I do, probably. Nah, I don't know much about nothing. <laughs> That's hilarious. See, those are the time. How fun would it be to live in those? But I mean, then you don't have. I wouldn't be able to get on post tweet. I wouldn't be able to watch you porn on my iphone I mean, it's I weird that you porn and tweeting are the first two things you're like well i would miss those God, that sounds like oh to the whole <laughs> modern world <laughs> <laughs> porn, porn you got the whorehouse right around the corner that's your porn True. yeah the same three bitches yeah forever diamond diamond <laughs> bessie right there she had her she, she does have a license she's, she's a license. good to go thank god you don't want an unlicensed one. no god no knows no. what might happen in there nope that's gets all teethy or something who knows <laughs> That would be. I mean, you ride into town, go to the brothel. If you yeah. were a woman in time, like, it'd be tough to be a chick. Where you look down on, you think? To <laughs> die. I think it all depends about scarcity. You know what I mean? It's like anywhere else. It's like if you're on I mean, a movie you set a for a long time and there's like a six there, man, after four or five days, that might be a nine. You know what I mean? And so like if you're in the Old West and maybe you see a girl every six months, everybody's a ten. Supply and demand. But is it? My question is when we ride into Dodge City. We hit the brothel. Just, are the are the girls that work there when they're off on their are they like strippers? You know, are they when they're when they're off the clock? Are, is everyone like, like, let's oh, knock some I'm shots, and Bessie, like oh, stay away from her kids. Like, is, I, they, I, I don't they think so, like, man. Like like White Dude. Earp's um old, old lady Maddie, she was a, a right. whore. Um, that's just part of the. So the back deal, then yeah. it was just you were just. I think so, well, man. I don't know. I just that's just kind of what I get out of that. I think it's it's always been and it's always ne- will necessary. be necessary. <laughs> yeah. No, it just there's different groups, right? Like yeah. if you hang out kind with strippers and prostitutes, you hang out with strippers and prostitutes, and they're all cool. But so the, the circles didn't the circles didn't 
now. Right, because you have you know the the people that wanted you to be sober, and they had these little societies for that. Who ran the market, the local market. Right. He probably That's, still snuck on. He you, talked you, badly he about it. But, but he was he, he would pay them to be dominatrixes people, yeah, on him. Exactly. <laughs> the, uh, that's where the freaky people stuff People are people, happens. and nothing's new under the you're, sun. You're right about this. And 80% of everybody is the people that worked in the mines or, or, mm-hmm. or, or did, did the laboring work, the people that didn't really care, that needed that, that worked on that with the cattle. There's a few people that have the money that are... Look yeah. down on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Down on it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But and they're all wanting, they all have those, all those cravings, though, too. And so that all comes out in the weird way. And that's where, like, it's like that Marine, like uh, 10 years ago or something, and he fucked a tranny and then found out she was a tranny, and then he killed her, and then he killed himself. Ridiculous. Instead of like just having a funny story, you could just have a funny story about that, and there's no murders, and you're still alive. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but, but but it's like then all those people in that Probably era that. get freaked out about it, and they're like, "Nope, now the hooker's got to die too." And it's like, yeah. what, 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 she's what, a witch. Why are we doing that? Yeah, yeah exactly she's right. a witch. Exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> Alakazam, yeah. get that bitch out of here! Yeah. 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 Yep, yeah, oh, that's man. it. But, I mean, you can gamble, drink, watch her make my dick disappear. The vigilante justice is what I like, man. It's just like, um, or whatever. Like, (laughs) you you shot a dude. Like, well, the dude said something about, about like he he challenged me or whatever. And I saw he had a gun. He looked like he was going for it, so I shot him. And so and so backed me up. So okay, you're good. good. You're you're good. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds legit. You could literally have a problem like mutual combat, like noon. Yeah. Be at the clock. It's just like that's that's like at school. See you after school at three fifteen behind the dumpsters or yeah. whatever, and then it's like that was the first nervous. That's like getting into a fight. Those school day fights. That's like getting into a fight in a professional fight Watch where you have to think wait. about yeah, it. You're waiting. You're like, that's yeah, the, yeah, that's right? the anybody can fight in a bar. Yep. You get out of the you car, you road go. rage. Whatever, mm-hmm. tough guy. Stop it. That's stupid. But Thinking you got to think about it for a long time. That's when you have to learn how to control your you mind. Know, that's what we're talking about. That's that's how the the OK Corral happened. Um, they they were in. Uh, who's a bad guy in that that? The, uh, all those bad guys were in, like, <laughs> we're, we're in the bar talking, talk, talking shit about the herbs. We're gonna get the herbs today. We're gonna get the herbs. This is it. This is it. This is today. We're gonna get it. And, and the herbs hurt, find found out about it. Ringo. Johnny Ringo. Yeah, Johnny Ringo. But it was um no, it uh, the little the little no good guy. Ike, 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 Ike Clanton, and all the Clantons and all of them. The Clanton and, 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 and the herbs are like, oh, let's just go smash this right now. Yeah, Where are they at? Let's just go get them. Like I could say, we, we got enough. We need to go. Like they're, they're threatening back. us and all yeah. that. Let's just get our friends. And then and go. they go, no, nah, Doc, you don't got to be here. You're sick and all that. And and he's offended. He's like, he, they're like, you're not an herb. It's okay. Yeah. It's our fight. And he's like, how dare you? Yeah. Like some real gentleman shit. I would, I, to be honest, I'd be uh, legitimately offended if you guys left me out of a fucking backyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's and right. You're like, hold on, we'll be right back. We're yep. going to fuck these dudes up. I'm like, uh, can I play too? You know, yeah, I'd be offended. If, if Cowboy had to go get something for some, somebody did some heinous thing yeah. and he had to go get somebody. Yeah. And like, what? You didn't call me? Yeah, like, well, <laughs> it's a weird <laughs> thing. I was talking to a, a, a friend of mine, uh, Hanato Migliaccio, and he was, he'd just come here, he's learning English, and, and we're going through all this, and, and, uh, and there, was a, there was a guy that was, I don't know, he was going from, like, somewhere in Texas on that, on that train line, and across, and, he, and there was a bunch of rapes that would happen, and so he's like a serial rapist that would just run the rail line, and they ended up catching the guy, and it was a big news a long time ago, and, and, uh, and he goes, what is this? I don't understand. I go, it's like a serial rapist. He's like a serial rapist and, and like trying to learn English and all that yeah. and understand concepts at the same time. And I go, you know, like a, like a serial killers, like uh, like they, just, they love to kill and they go and they kill a bunch of people and they're like OCD about it. And like, this is a guy that does that with rape. Or, and he goes, oh, I go, you don't have that in Brazil? He goes, no. He <laughs> says, you rape one time. And he says, and then... The brothers and the father, we kill you. Yeah. And then, like, and he goes, the police. If you get in a traffic accident, they're not going to come. But also, they're not going to come for that. Like, there's real street justice. Yeah. There's like, yeah. and I was like, that's fucking a way healthier society. There should be, street you know, justice. Yeah. you should not be allowed to to be on Jared and, and molest little kids and then go get protective custody for the rest of your life. Like that should not be. That should not be allowed. That's what you're doing right now is fat shaming. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jared lost a lot of weight and I don't see why you got to bring up old shit okay oh, the guy's enough. a success story fair enough yeah success they started <laughs> yeah the wild west stuff like oh so and so raped this kid right. like dead yeah dead 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 I mean, your Leech horse. Pop. How, 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 how come you haven't done anything was? to him yet why is he still there yeah, yeah. be like yeah what why are you telling me something like, going on yeah couldn't even 
What what now? Delving into all you guys are all kind of like um, combative in a way we could say. Like there's a history of violence with with oh, everybody true. here at this table. That's very true. What do you guys think about uh, the Orlando thing that just occurred? My first thought was that that guy had to be queer, gay. Is that, <laughs> That's is that the a first thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's pretty descriptive. I know just yeah, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I think you're doing great. My first thought, like, who goes in there just to target gay people? You got to yeah. have some mental shit. My first there. thought, I was in, I was in Boston still, I guess, when I heard it, and, uh, and I thought, I thought it's weird. A bunch of gay, like a bunch of people dancing. I'm like, and I'm like, how do you get fifty and shot a hundred overall? I'm like, one guy. I'm like, that's crazy but oh, then you figure the lights at. are going and it's flashing yeah. there's probably 30 people that drop before anybody knows what's going on even sure. it's so loud right but then i thought why why gay folks and then we before that it was the it was the adult retarded people yeah. and i go this is like if you're if you're if you're a radical extremist group and there's a hundred thousand of you and you all happen to be muslim too and then there's three billion muslim or whatever there are and you go we need a real big race religious war yeah you'd go okay i want the most liberal factions of this country of the superpower to scream for the death of all muslims and that's kind of like it's like there's this because tw- otherwise it doesn't make point it's not like that's the thoughtless thing now it uh, turns out it was probably one singular gay guy sure. that got his feelings hurt by his lover or something like that but like the, the whole thing it seems like a, it's such a smoke show i'm like i got no idea what's real i you heard something country. about that like know. yeah Tate and I were having a conversation right after this. You're talking about a b- bunch of warrior type guys here. It's like, like how come like squeeze out so many shots, k- kill so many people? Like how come like not one person came up and attacked that guy? Yeah. Like we, all of us right. were attacked the guy, but that's not it. Like uh, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there were some dudes that got up and like somebody's shooting. We better go and and try and take him down. Whatever the thing is, not enough people got behind that guy yeah. right. to help him out to go get him. You know, the first guy gets up and runs. He yeah. gets dropped, and there's not the second and third guy. Yeah. By the time the second or no third guy are there. there you're going to touch there. that no guy. No doubt a lot of those people were here. Because he's, like he, you know? he's reloading, too. Yeah, you uh-huh. figure he goes through 30-round magazine. He's got to reload. Like, there's a great opportunity sure. there. Another thing, though, before I, before I go in, it's impossible. Like, people say, like, I would do this and I would do that. And Greg will talk about this. It's impo- It's easy to say that, but it's impossible to say what you would do until you're in, in a situation. And the other thing is, when you're raised around guns a lot in where bullets are flying, like, your first instinct is always to get cover. Like, yeah. You're not usually, when you're younger especially, you're not usually thinking, oh, let me go take this dude down. You're like, oh, I don't want to get shot. Yeah. So you're trying to hide behind cars. You're ducking behind, you know, you're, when you hear those rounds going around or glasses breaking around you or stuff, you're just trying to get small and into some cover. Um, and I think it's a mentality shift to be then, able to say, okay, I'm going to actually go. Do I think you need to run to the shift. bullets? Right. Well, that's that's the thing now is, and that's that's one of the differences. Like when I was young, there weren't mass shootings like that. No. But guns were coming out all the time where I was raised, and the shots were fired, and that's just the way it was. But now that the mentality has to be different. Like, everyone's going down if you don't rush the dude. So you might as well go out, I guess. And we have four of us at this table that probably have a gun on them at all times. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your and everyone asks me, like, why do you have a fucking gun in every vehicle? Right, you you're, you're, like, you're, you're an ass you're, kicker or whatever, yeah, yeah, all that. And I'll say, well, it's like a samurai sword. If I pull this motherfucker, someone's dying. You know, like, yeah, that. Yeah. and I don't, I'm not, I don't just out waving my gun around, but no. if somebody, if I'm in a movie theater, you know, like right now I have my gun on my ride my Harley with it. If something, if something crazy happened, man, I'm, I'll be the goddamn if I'm going to be the one not having a gun in the yep. gunfight. Amen right? to that. So yep. if, if you're never, like that, you're never going to know it until the bullets are in you yeah. is what is like, yeah. that's what I feel about it. It's like, if, 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 if a gun gets exposed, it, you better empty that like that better be you've already taken all your shots and then you can decide what you're going to do after that but it's never like a brandishing thing or like I don't want people I don't even want anybody to know if I have a gun on me no, I'm with you I'm yeah. 100% you don't, you don't even want anybody because it's a problem know. I want to yeah. know how do I keep it 100% secured so it never because I'm going to I'm going to squab with you first yeah. if there's a thing like, sure. like it's not like a this thing like I'm trying to avoid yeah. like that like but if there's my people that are around and I need to take care of those people, like I need to be equipped to take care of those people. Or if you're sitting in, in the new Batman show and someone comes up with a gun, you're going to be like, yep, I got an answer to this problem. Sure. Sure. You know, easy. And I don't know how you say what will happen if someone brings out a gun. I've had it several times. I know exactly what I would do, but I don't know what I'd do if I got shot. And Greg was talking about this new combatants class he's talking about. He's like, we teach the guys to, to keep executing plan even if they get a couple hot ones in them. I'm like, I don't know if wow. I can a- execute any. I get shot. 
Pimp down. Like, I'm going to pimp down. I'm going to pimp down. I'm going to have the man in me just to keep. I'll have the Tim Kennedy in me just to get up, kill six more people, take another one, and, and pick up a girl and three kids and run to the helicopter. Like, I don't know if that's me. I might take a hot I, one I, and I'm I, gone. I'm I got a good idea. A, what the, <laughs> that's like, wait till I tell the boys about this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my scars. Like, no way. Can't wait to get back to BMF. <laughs> <laughs> I got a friend uh, Jer- Jared Shaw that we were on Jurassic with, and he and he goes uh, he goes one time he they went to a house and I don't know what country they were in, but it, they were they were waiting for him and yeah. and he's uh, he's still team two and you go in and sure. uh, and or uh, whatever they but it's a hot house and that they were listening to their 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 uh, communication so they knew they were coming they didn't yeah. know when whatever they're ready they go in and he says one of his friends goes and he has his primary weapon he gets shot and it gets shot out of his hand and it, and it shoots his shoots his thumb off right and he says and instantly and he says and I was still at the door and instantly he drops it and he goes to a secondary weapon and pulls out and he kills three guys in the room right with <laughs> like with holes in him and and part of his hand missing and it's just like i think that uh you know like that's what you're talking about is like that it's a repetitive action like becoming yourself is becoming the killer that is you need to be able to diminish the threat 100 percent. is it a you, little you bit get your thumb you go pick it up and yeah. sit on or you just leave it from now on it is is it greg like like how do how do people um do you train yourself to be like like it's a state of mind you have going into this like, like this is the way I'm going to react to certain situations and there's no question like do I, what do I do do I turn around do I save my thumb do I pick up my thumb it's just my how do you get your mind to be like I'm, I'm still continually going forward and, and fighting the fight and doing the thing well I think it's just uh, in my opinion what do I know about anything you know uh, but in my opinion it I would hate be that. <laughs> I hate that so much when Wink does that too yeah. I hate it what would I know about kickboxing yeah. Mr. Fletcher but maybe you want to move to your left I don't know great scene more r- real fighter, fighters and fake fighters. Than, <laughs> yeah. no, I don't know anything, but I, I will say that in my uh, <laughs> in my worst. limited uh, in my limited experience, um, <laughs> it's just about getting to the process and then just being able to stay in that process, which is what you guys were talking about earlier. Um, when you're fighting, it's it's are you capable of staying in that process regardless of pain, regardless of fatigue, um, and and that's just at the level. So how do you, you know, teach that? Well, you How have you put to someone in that position. So it's it, it's can uh, you it's, teach that? Yes, but yes and no. Do you have if you have a willingness to learn, you mental toughness can be taught. I always everybody's like, oh, it's 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 mental toughness is something you're born with or not. No, I would say desire, the desire to be mentally tough is you're born with or not because people will be ah it's too hard for me to be mentally tough da, da, da. but if you're des- if you have the desire each and every one of these guys sitting in front of me when the first time you guys ran the hill with me you weren't killing it. But the last time, <laughs> but the last time you guys ran the hill, you're killing it. Now, what's the difference there? Like, are you telling me you're better athletes, more in shape? No, you're all in shape. It's just mentally. You get mentally used to being able to suffer and push yourself to those extremes. Um, and that's one of the reasons I love parachuting. Me and Cowboy go parachuting is because you, if you don't pay attention to everything, if you don't keep your mind moving, you're either going to be seriously hurt or die. So if you're not being aware of when you have to do a cutaway when you're aware that you know what what you need to be where you are in the landing cycle all of these things if you're not aware of those things if you're not giving yourself to that process you will be seriously injured or killed and so you have to stay in that moment like staying in the moment when things are trying to pull you out of that moment pain is trying to pull you out of the moment fatigue is trying to pull you out of the moment fear is trying to pull you out of the moment to stay in that moment and to be able to push on is just practicing doing it over and over and over so you you have to suffer you have to get into into positions where you're afraid where things are scary where things hurt where suffering is real and then you make yourself used to that you say okay this is this is real i if i screw this up it could cost me life it could cost me limb um, we've all been injured in here. Some of like Cowboy and I were just talking about when he was really broke his back climbing. So like there, there, are, there are times that consequences are real. If you can say, okay, in those consequences and in that time, I'm able to stay in this process. No matter what you throw at me, unless I'm unconscious, I'm able to stay there. Then that is the mindset that you want. So if your thumb's blown off or if you're just tired or your arms are broken, I mean, everybody in here has fought through some kind of break, uh, myself included. So it... It's just, can you do it at the time? 
Um, and for me, it's it's just about practicing. Your mind is a muscle, and you just have to practice that. I love that, and, and I think that's something in our society right now. Like people don't get to get into their reptilian brain enough. Like there's a small percentage of, of society that gets to experience that, where you have to stay focused, where it's fight or flight. It's like if you mess up, you'll die. Like just like not literally. Sometimes you're gonna die, but but you just seriously have that, injured. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, exactly. Or like, somebody else. Like you just like, you know you're yeah. responsible uh, for other people. Even worse, you, right? yeah, you know, yeah. and that and that's a thing. Like you have a partner that you're responsible to. I love that about that you can't that, that you can train the the toughness, but the the desire. You know, that's the thing about getting people to believe they can try. Getting people to believe that they can have that desire because that's available to everybody. You know, you can you get to flip. You're in charge of that fucking switch. You know what I mean? And then you put yourself through the repetitions, and you can get yourself there. And that's that's a beautiful part. But one thing that I think about too in this, and I've been talking about it a, a, a bunch, is. Uh, you know the aspect of like a rites of passage and, and things yeah. like that you're talking about high level warriors in, in this kind of position and, and, and training them into that way or, or professional athletes that are using their bodies minds timing toughness to, to be able to um, exact uh, results um, what, where does that begin for like you as a father uh, with, with kids and like because there's not like rites of passage it's like we're, we, we, we have to create our own Sparta you know, in, in a way, you know what I mean? And That's so very true. it's all this kind of contrived thing. And people would say, well, it's made up, so it's not real, so it's not important. But I would say that that is also the, the hammer that forms the character of a man. And I mean, like one of the biggest problems that we all know is that, you know, if, if a dude is a super entitled little douchebag, you're like, oh, he got to be 26 years old and he's never been punched in the mouth. He doesn't know there's a consequence yeah. in life, right? He doesn't know there's a pecking order. People aren't fucking equal. You know, there's, there's all that. And so like, where do you begin that kind of a conversation or when does that become present to you as a father as somebody that's made a human and you're like i'm responsible now to bring this human up in a way that they're going to be representative of what i think is character well that's a very good question um both of my kids I, i'm really lucky are great kids and neither of them want the warrior lifestyle that i have and I'm, I'm glad for that because i think everybody has their own path and there's different like i was raised by people that do not fight they do not fight but they're incredibly brave. Um, they would do sit-ins in the 60s. I mean, the, so you, warrior to me is- Different is, paths of the same right, thing. They right, fight, that's yeah. a right, fight. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly, it's a different thing. Um, and <clears throat> I think there's sheepdogs in society and, and you, you, all three of you guys, if you guys weren't fighters, you would be cops like that. So you just have to have that warrior uh, ethos or soldiers. Um, but just fighting is where you guys feel comfortable. Cowboy but, would be the worst cop. I try ever. to be a fucking warrior. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to sign up to be Yeah, the army said cowboys too crazy the for army him. Army said no. Um, Marine said no. <laughs> but um, so for me, it, it's just about well, what what attributes do I admire? Well, I admire tolerance. I admire there's a lot of things that I actually admire, and not all of them are super gung ho, screaming, you know, bro stuff. Um, so I, I try to give my kids that. I try to remind them that they're not, uh, you know, that they're not entitled to things. That they're lucky they have what they have. And, and I have two great kids because of, of, I think that mentality that both me and my wife share. But uh, I think that also, um, like me and my son go camping, and we're uncomfortable. Like when we go camping, we don't go in a trailer. We go in a tent. I made him eat MREs for a couple oh, days yeah. straight. Yeah, like that, because I want him to know, like. This is sleeping on the ground, freezing cold. Like we were just up in the in the Rockies in Colorado not too long ago. Me and my boy, and it was cold. It, there was snow on the ground all around us. We're at probably nine thousand feet, and we're both freezing. And we did a couple nights freezing, and that's how you learn. It's a rite of passage, man. You got to man up in the face so of you your friends. You don't go clamping you? like me in my RV. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I was just, I, just saw, okay. uh, uh, I was reading a thing earlier about that it's important for kids to be bored in the summer mm -hmm. and and that being bored is that you know we we think all these things we think of stress or, or like oh we need comfort and, and all those things the more i become aware as a man I, I go those are all the things you need to push away like that's the thing that will rot you give you cancer like go you know mm -hmm. and and that thing that piece about boredom was interesting they're like if you're completely trying to fire the mind all the time um 
there's a lot of neurotransmitter stuff that I didn't really understand that isn't so great for you, but, but also it robs you of all your creativity. There's, there's, there's no, there's, you know, to, to live in that fantasy world is to be in that creation. Like we'd have no space program without that. We'd have sure. no, 100%. no big ideas like, uh, like, like the way Elon Musk is thinking. We, we wouldn't have any of that. And, I, and it really spoke to like, I think, uh, there's a, a quote attributed to, um, Steve Jobs about it. The one, when his kids were like 13 or something and, and they said, well, your kid must be a, fucking ace on this ipad deal and he goes they've never seen it they, i don't let them touch that why would i rob the most uh intuitive creative uh awesome tool that there is by putting this thing on it which is just like a barrier to all those things and, and uh and i think that's a huge thing like you gotta be tough i think to be a parent to do it right it's definitely very challenging but my best memories like I didn't have a lot of kids a lot of friends growing up uh, I had some but just playing by myself in the backyard like uh, swinging my little wooden sword around like yeah. that's why everybody always wonders how do you see fights and da, da, da. I learned how to see fights before I ever even knew what MMA was because I would visualize an entire story just being bored out of my mind it was me in the house we didn't have a television so I just and my parents weren't letting me stay in that house at all because I was a little rambunctious I'd go out in the backyard and I would do an entire story or I'd make up superhero yeah. things or whatever and that was my imagination so i tap into that same thing when i'm looking at okay so me and cowboy got a game plan so i look at the fighter and i imagine all the scenarios and da 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 da, da but that is trained because of boredom like straight boredom my son wouldn't play so the piano awesome. if he played video games all day like he so just also you, right. you, you you allowed yourself time to dream you know like uh, when yeah. you're you got tv you got you're always looking at your phone or looking at your iPad, you don't have any, any time to dream and, and think about what you want to do when you get old. And That's how I'd always, like those stories you're talking about, I'd always put myself to bed that way. Yeah. And I would go, I'd be like, you know, okay, well, I'm a cowboy and I've got a <laughs> double barrel shotgun yeah. and I'm, I'm wearing a trench coat and I'm, okay, I come into town all alone and then <laughs> there's an old friend that I hadn't seen for a while or whatever, you know, and there's, yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or you're a knight or you're, a, there was always something like that or you're... And then you end up playing with your little wooden sword alone. <laughs> <laughs> But there's there's all that shit, you man. Go like build your that imagination. <laughs> Come into my fort. <laughs> Come into my fort, bro. Oh, your shit. fort with your with people are gonna come attack your fort, <laughs> yeah. waiting for somebody to come along. But there's nobody coming along. <laughs> yeah, we would do that with ice. What like in Michigan, man? We build fucking like ice tunnels and shit, and yeah. all like, man. There's people that got elaborate with it. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't have sport, if there wasn't like street hockey to play or something like that, it's like you're into that, you know? Yeah. That's Listen, the worst I part about growing up. I hate to cut you guys off. off. Oh, you got to go? You got to what, 215 I, manicure or I what? Gotta, I got it. What's your thing? It's my conditioning. I got some, I, someone's got to put this hard work in. You know, you know what? what? You someone doesn't let this hard work in. You said, hey, I'll be done after 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm free all day. That's all day till 2 but, is no, what I meant what you to say. Said. But, but I went swimming this that. morning. Then I had all day to ride Harleys. Like, Keith didn't come and join me. <laughs> and then I got 215, and then I got mitts, and then I got jujitsu. We got to do this again, man. Yeah, I think so. Part two. And also, like, like before we go, like, what's all... I, I want to go into all the stuff here. We got to talk a lot. We maybe we'll talk without this loud mouth. Without cowboy. But you're doing all kinds of cool <laughs> shit, man. And oh, I'm yeah. excited to hear about all that. Um, do you got sponsors and stuff you think, or you just don't give a shit? You're like, I love Budweiser. Mm -hmm. Give me a Monster Energy in the morning. I'm good. I don't need eggs. Monster, don't monster need eggs. Energy <laughs> in the morning. No, no, eggs. no eggs. Riding my Harley Davidson, drinking my Budweiser. It's a good <laughs> deal. So does does, does a monster have like a cool kind of healthy drink now that doesn't have a lot of sugar and stuff? They have a, they have that like a is impossible. Drink. I don't even know what it is, but you just said, doesn't monster have a healthy drink? I would say that's impossible. <laughs> cool, that man, is impossible. To <laughs> He's serving him a Dude, bottle. listen, I heard, I heard oil in the ocean isn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I don't know. I heard monster's amazing, man. Amazing. Yeah. Monster and a Budweiser and you are fucking... Yeah, world class athlete. Mix them together, yeah, right? Mix them, if you mix them, want to bring you up, want to keep you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I feel like that. I feel like that's. I feel like that's a picture. Is that this was so I don't get too relaxed. This one relaxes me a little bit. Yeah, I one, keep a good one balance. Starts the remember? party, one keeps the party going. Then you bring the yep. cocaine in to run it all night, and you're good to go. So uh, remember back in the day, we used to do the uh, energy drinks with vodka. Like that was oh, like Red Bull and vodka. Yeah. And like, then Bud, didn't Budweiser put in like ginseng? They're like, we're going to hop up our Bud Light and we're going to put ginseng and fucking amino acids and shit. And I'm like, just pump the brakes, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That, that's a whole different conversation, right? You, you, didn't even, you didn't need to silence your phone, huh? I don't know whose phone this is. 
Do you think this is my phone? A pink case <laughs> with the fanny pack, I figured. <laughs> never know. You mean you got you got pirate braids and a pink phone? It's and true. It is true. I do look good. Thank you for you need noticing. A, you need a whale dick bone hanging out of there like Johnny do you know, like who? Like Johnny Depp. Don't he have a whale, whale dick uh, bone in his hair? You get a different newsletter than that. Oh, I come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know what goes on out that ranch. But uh, anyway, uh, enjoy your, uh, yeah. quote, conditioning. Yeah. It's going to be great. I'm going to love it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Sorry for cutting it short. It's all right. It's good. Leave them wanting more. That's what they say, right? Part two. Part two. Coming to you. So all you guys out there with little dicks, it's see you always leave them wanting more. You're doing the right thing, guys. You, you just keep up the fight. <laughs> That's a party word. That's our closing wisdom. <laughs> 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 right. We out with small dicks. <laughs>